Yeah, I'm gonna modify this Logitech C615 to become a near-infrared webcam. And so this is an HD model. It is Mac compatible. And I recommend before you tear one apart, whatever model you get, you should uh, try it out and make sure it works on whatever computer you intend to use it on. And so the first thing you want to do is look around for how can I get into this thing. And it looks pretty sealed up. But um, with some other experimenting I did before, I noticed that these panels here are just kind of taped on. And so you can try and pry them off uh, using a little screwdriver. I was able to just pop them off there, but save them for later if you want it to look good when you're done putting it away. Putting it back together. And so now I got those off and I've revealed uh, four small screws. And so we need a small screwdriver. Let's see if this one works. Uh, I think it is. Let's get a smaller one. There we go. And so just remove those four screws. And so really all we're trying to do is open it up to get at the um, CCD chip which will have an infrared blocking filter somewhere on it. You never know where. They can all be kind of different. And then we want to remove that and replace it with a infrared pass filter, one that only passes near infrared and not much visible. And so I got that off. And this piece here also pops out. And this piece around the side is just attached. Let's try um, prying it off with a screwdriver. So don't do this to an expensive camera unless you're willing to sacrifice it. Uh, this is actually the second one of these I've made. The first one works fine, but, um, whoops, uh, suffered some cosmetic damages as this one just did, but you don't really care. It is nice to get it sealed back again. Put that off, and what do you know? There it is. There she blows. That is the CCD chip is somewhere behind this. And if you take a look, there's a screw here and a screw there. And so I take the four screws I took off before and put them aside. You don't want to get the different screws mixed up. They might be different sizes. And here we want to be a little more careful because we could uh, break a connection here on the circuit board. I paid uh, $25 for this. Bought it on Amazon from a reseller. I think this is a possibly discontinued model, but there are still new ones for sale. And you'll find that's true with webcams. You can find discontinued models still for sale, sometimes new, sometimes used. Get that screw out of there, some magnetic. There we go. And so lift that up and I could disconnect this wire, but it looks like I can just get a little slack there so I could have disconnected it so I can move it around better. And so what I need to do is get underneath this. This looks like it might come out. It's kind of spinning here, seems loose. So 
this is the lens. And so there's the CCD chip. There's a little, looks like a little protective cover on it. And then lo and behold, on the other side of the lens is the infrared cut filter. So I need to remove that. Unfortunately, it's glued onto the end. And so the last one that I removed, it's really thin and breakable. So I just took a uh, pencil and popped it off. Uh, I'm going to pause this here and try a few other ways because I want to see if I can get it off intact because uh, it's kind of cool to experiment with it and see what frequencies get through it. But uh, if I'm not able to, I will just uh, smash this one off too. Okay, we're back. It's unsuccessful in my effort to remove the IR block filter, cut filter, without breaking it. So go ahead and sacrifice it here. And so this is what I did before, is I took a pencil and eraser size, eraser side down, and then hit it with a hammer. That way it didn't um, go in and damage the lens, but it did break that off. And then let's see if we can use a small screwdriver to get rid of the pieces. So this was um, blocking out the uh, infrared light that we want to collect. And so that's sort of step one is removing this guy. This looks like really thin um, glass. And so you want to be careful around it. Make sure you clean it up. Don't want it getting inside your fingers. So that seemed to work. I don't think I damaged the lens. If I did, not too much. And it still should work fine. The better ones, there'll just be a piece and it just pops right off. This one they glued on there pretty well. Uh, so I wouldn't otherwise recommend this one to convert except I know it's Mac compatible and I was able to successfully do it. Okay, I'm going to clean that up a little bit before we put it back on and clean this glass up. Okay, I cleaned up the glass and cleaned this up pretty well. You could do maybe a better job of it, but it's ready to go back in. But we have one other step here. And so what I'm going to do is put a infrared pass filter. So a filter that blocks the visible and lets only infrared through. Uh, the best one to do that with is a Rattan number 87C. And that's what I recommend. You can get those on eBay for not a lot, but if you buy them new, they can be real expensive. But as explained in my blog, something that works almost as well is developed unexposed color film. And I noticed some of it looks a little blue. You want to get, this is almost every one I have looks like this. And it has kind of a reddish brown tinge to it. And this part that looks opaque, that is the um, part that's unexposed but developed. And you can, it does, it lets a little visible through. Most people that use this recommend doubling it up in the filter, uh, doubling up to use as a filter. Now you can also cover the outside of your camera with this, and then you can remove it and put it back in. That's a good idea as well. I'm going to install it so it's inside and it's uh, forever a infrared webcam. So I'm going to cut a couple of little pieces that will fit right over there, and then I'll put the lens back in. Okay, I cut uh, two small pieces, 
and put them in on top of the CCD chip. And then now we can put the lens back in. That will help seat those filters too. And this. And we just need to um, put that in a little bit more. And so before we um, put things back together, it'd be a good idea to make sure this thing works. And so you want to make sure you're not shorting anything, but I'm going to plug this into my computer and see what sort of image I get. Usually it's a focus issue, and so I probably will need to adjust how far this lens is in the housing to make sure it's focused right. Okay, here I am testing it out in photo booth. So I adjusted the focus. So I'm shining it toward the outside windows. You can see the infrared from the sun coming in. You can see the fluorescent lights don't give off a lot of IR. There's me. And it looks like it could adjust the focus a little bit more, but it looks okay. I got a few spots on it. Uh, did not have any compressed air. Should have cleaned it up a bit more, but this will be serviceable. So I'm going to um, put it back together. Okay, I noticed as I was assembling it that the focus was a little bit out. And you can see for this one, this housing for the lens kind of can bend up some. And so it won't go back all the way down. So what I'm gonna do when I assemble it is I'm gonna take this piece of masking tape that I rolled up into a little ball here. I'm gonna put it there. So when I put the cover on, there'll be some pressure on that to push it down. Just make sure the tape doesn't go over the lens and that should work. So now I've got it all reassembled. I, um, you can see the little bit of masking tape there pushing it down that did improve the focus. And uh, I also used some um, compressed air to blow some of the dust out and so that cleared up a few spots that were on the lens. And so I would call this a success uh, that it works with my Mac. Not the best camera for converting to a webcam infrared webcam but uh, work pretty well and so if you do have a Mac uh, I would recommend giving this one a try if you have a PC I would just go with the cheaper Logitechs that aren't HD that I recommend in my blog or that you can find and uh, they would work uh, maybe better as far as converting okay I've got it all assembled and I'm showing photo booth on my computer and I'm just filming it with my iPhone so it's not a really high quality image but you can see the near IR coming in the windows um, back there is a window but I also have the fluorescence on and can't really see anything from them and there's some reflected near IR if I point it down at my table it's kind of dark so I take this remote control and so it acts like a little flashlight and I have a $20 bill down there and you can see it is um, showing the opaque strip that I talk about in the blog. That's like one of the best demos to do with these. The only way to see that is in a near IR camera. So hopefully you'll give this a try with whatever webcam uh, you obtain. Usually you can convert them. Uh, sometimes it takes a second try. So get a cheap one.